Hi, my name is Marsha, I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde, and today I want to share the story of another inspirational woman with you. Her name is Catherine, and she is a fellow techie blonde on YouTube, running a channel called Blondie Bites. If you have not been following her up till now, make sure you do. The link will be here and also in the description. So yes, check her channel out. But without further ado, I want to talk to Catherine and share her story with you. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. I am super excited to hear your story and share it with my viewers. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, let's just jump straight into it. Um, we've chatted a little bit before this, but I would really love for you to share with the viewers more about your journey. How did you end up where you are right now? What was the path like? Was it direct? Did it have some twists and turns? Tell me. Well, I don't think any path is completely straight or direct. Like everything you experience, I think, guides you along. Like what you're going to end up doing like you follow your interests and what you're interested in and by doing that you find yourself in places i think you glad are unexpected when i was in elementary school i you know was a huge neopets and myspace fan and when you play neopets if you you know were playing when you were 10 years old like i was you pretended you were 13 so you could gain access to these communities they were called guilds and for these communities, you basically created web pages, like you created your home page for your little group, and then you had your members pages and your like message board page. And in doing that, you were writing code. Like no one told you you were writing code, but you were writing code, you were figuring out how to bold certain areas or how to make the text this color or the background this color or the background image this color. And you were Googling around trying to figure out how to create the coolest guild and then when that was, you know, not cool anymore, you had MySpace and you're trying to figure out like how to create, you know, sparkly mouse pointers and, you know, sparkly backgrounds. And that was the thing in middle school. But again, no one told you you were coding. You were looking up all these different pieces of code to design your own personal pages, but you weren't doing it to learn how to code. You were doing it because you wanted to create this cool looking page. So did that, um, and no one knew. Like I don't think my family even knew I was coding. Like no one knew about it. It was just like, oh, you're playing MySpace, or you're on the open. Um, and then went to college, and I was really. I've always been interested in like math and science, um, but just it never like chemistry to me was cool. But you know, not it. Same thing with bio, like all the experiments just took so long. Like I liked in math, like you would follow the problem and then have those results and be able to check it immediately if it's right or wrong. Um, and just that problem solving process where I think, you know, in bio and chemistry, you can set everything up and then it's still like annoying when it doesn't work. And that happens in coding, but besides the point, you, so I was, so yeah, so I basically wanted to do this degree program at my university and like Kim was an option, bio was an option, and then computer science was an option. Um, these were like all different requirements you could take. Uh, you can only take so many your first semester. So when I was choosing the requirements, the shortest lab was computer science. And so I chose that and was like, OK, you know, I've already done bio and Kim before. I haven't done computer science. Don't really know what it is. Um, let's just do that. And then ended up ditching the you know dual degree program and just loved computer science. I was telling everyone about computer science, like it's two people on my floor in college to take a class. I was just excited. That's awesome. And so this is how you ended up in computer science. Yeah. And now basically coding professionally, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was definitely, like, I am so thankful, like, computer science is on that requirements list, because if it wasn't, like, I wouldn't be here. Um, and, like, the college I went to was so interesting in that it taught computer science from such a base level. Like, a lot of times if you're going to, you know, a school that's specialized in computer science or, like, engineering is the school thing, they expect you to know so much on day one, and that's what makes it so intimidating. 
Whereas this school, I remember, you know, first day of class, the professor was like, you know, raise your hand if you've ever coded before, if you've ever done computer science. Of course, I had, but I didn't raise my hand because I didn't know that I coded. Um, but like three people in the class of like 30, it was like a smaller school, in the class of 30, I raised their hands and it was like, okay, we're starting from square one. And that was just decided. And I think that really helped my journey. Yeah, I can imagine. That's, it's very, it's very important to feel like you belong to this group. And yeah, yeah very, very important. Um, so, well, my next question was going to be about your decision making process, but you kind of out have outlined that already. So I'll jump to the next one, which is were there challenging times and how did they make you stronger? Yeah, I think with any career you choose, like there's going to be challenging times, whether, you know, you choose art or computer science or physics or you know, psychology or philosophy, like you're going to face challenges. You're going to face writer's block if you're a writer and you're going to face errors if you're a computer scientist. And I think a lot of times, at least when I was starting out, like all you see are the errors. You see, you know, every single thing you do causes an error. Like you're always getting, like, and it's especially the most annoying of, you know, syntax errors. So you're always getting a syntax error. You're always forgetting, you know, if it's Java, that's semicolon, or, you know, if it's Python, that white space isn't right, and it's, it's annoying, and it's challenging, it's like every time you, you know, sit in class, you know, you are, like, for, like, my university, we had, like, TAs, and they would walk around during the labs, and I felt like my hand was always up, um, always asking the TAs for up, I was always at those office hours, for sure, and, talking to them and trying to figure out like, well, why was my code not working? And I think as you grow, you start, like, you can begin to recognize the errors and be like, oh, that's what that means. Oh, that's what that means. And the errors become more hints towards your solution. Um, so I think that definitely, like, having a different perspective on what, when your program doesn't work, like, not seeing the errors as problems, but as, like, the key to what it's, you know, is going to make your program great and the key to that solution that you'll ultimately develop. I think if it wasn't just those errors that helped, you know, make me stronger as a computer scientist, but it was very much the community and the TAs, like being able to go to them and talk to them about, you know, why my programs weren't working and being able to learn from them. I think a lot of times in, you know, obviously you can have bigger challenges than just some errors, like, I think it's the community that you find that really builds you up. And I think technology in itself has such a big community, whether it's online or at hackathons or at your university or your friends. Like everyone, like in this day and age, is interested in technology and wants to find out, you know, something new. And I think it's a very helpful community and that I think really builds others up. I couldn't agree more. It's all about community. I, yeah. I used to build community as actually my, well, one of my previous roles. And it's super, super important when you have this support system. I could just see that. Um, and it was, yeah, a very rewarding experience doing that. But I also love that mentality of, you know, these, uh, the bugs that you have are kind of your keys to your solution. It's kind of like, <laughs> being in an escape room almost and trying to sur <laughs> solve those problems and get out and get your, yeah. you know, end product in the end. Um, yeah, I love that mentality. <laughs> what is your superpower? My superpower? Um, I think my superpower is definitely communication. I think, and this isn't like a superpower, you know, a lot of times when you think of superpower, you're born with it. And this is something I definitely was not born with. Like, I think it definitely takes time to develop. Um, but I think for me, like being able to communicate technical concepts to people that don't understand computer science and vice versa, uh, like things that might exist in the real world and converting them into technical solutions I think like that I think that's really hard to find nowadays and I think a more it's being more appreciated now more than ever I think it's now like people are starting to want that skill versus being the coder in the corner that just develops and they're this super cracker and that's all they do and, that, and that's really cool like to me I think like 
yeah, my difference from that is just being able to communicate and teach. Yeah, because I run like the YouTube channel and stuff, but yeah. Absolutely. And the link will be here in the cards uh, or here in the cards. <laughs> I don't know which side this will end up on. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, wait, I, I will talk to the camera. The link will be here in the cards <laughs> or here or here. It's a little dance, <laughs> a little dance break. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's awesome. Communication is super important, and especially uh, when tech is becoming such a huge part of our lives, and a lot of companies are integrating technology into their mm -hmm. solutions, and so teams need to really communicate with each other, and nobody really wants that hacker that is a super hacker anymore, right? People want yeah. developers who have soft skills, and communication is probably one of the top skills that anybody could have. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And what is your next adventure? My next adventure, ooh, it's hard. Um, I think that my next adventure, or at least adventure into coding, because um, like when people say coding and computer science, like a lot of times it's, you know, it's seen as like one thing, like, you know, you're a coder because you build iOS apps, or you're a coder because you do one specific thing. And there's just so many fields out there that I've really been trying to branch out. And I think my next adventure is machine learning. It's like such a buzzword and like annoyingly a buzzword. And like everyone's trying to learn machine learning. But I think like, like I'm really trying to learn like how you build like the models and how you take a training set and basically make it usable for that model and then prediction. Like you can use machine learning APIs and you know that sort of thing, or you know you can build something for an Alexa skill and you're kind of using machine learning because you're using like uh, Amazon's like natural language processing that NLP that basically understands what you say. But uh, I'm really interested in just like how those models are made and like how do you you know, create a machine learning application that's like at its core based on models that you created, so. That's awesome. That is super interesting and definitely an adventure for sure. <laughs> an adventure with its own challenges and, you know, high points, I guess. You can probably compare that to mountain climbing <laughs> almost. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely a learning curve. And then once you're in the top, it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally, my final question is, what would you recommend to women who are trying to find their passion and build their own path, like design their own path, however you want to put it? Sure. Um, I think you have to constantly experience new things that even if you don't think you're going to like it, like do it anyway. Like anything that seems like absolutely ridiculous and a preposterous plan, like just go ahead, do it, run with it. Um, this kind of like leads back to like what I was saying before about machine learning, but I think, and obviously I'm no expert yet, but um, my manager, actually my old manager, like related it this way to me. Basically, like everything we experience, all all of our experiences, they're really training data and in our minds. And so, if you think of all the experiences you've got, training data in your mind, and your mind is like clinking and turning, and your mind is this model. And when we innovate and create new solutions and new things, it's based on what we've seen before. If we haven't seen something like it, we're not able to make those connections unless we have those different experiences that are diverse and not doing the same thing every night, not doing the same thing every weekend. You have to really get yourself out there. And that doesn't mean necessarily that, you know, you're coding all the time and coding different things or you're doing, you know, you're learning all the time. It means that you're going to the escape room, you're going to the salsa class, you're going and you're cooking something new. You know, you're meeting different types of people at a happy hour event. You know, you're meeting, you know, people that you maybe not normally hang out with. Like, being able to step out of your comfort zone, I think that is essential to finding your passion. I love that tip because it's so true. It's everything you experience. It's I would I don't want to sound too hippie, but you know, it happens for a reason. Everything you do happens for a reason. It took you to where you are right now and 
It's soul experiences that are building up your experiences. I mean, everything you experience, like, ultimately influences your next decision. Like, what, you know, do you decide to take that cross-country trip or do you decide to, you know, do something that's less exciting but, you know, like a less exciting decision, I guess. Like, do you have pizza or do you have burritos or, you know, you never know, like, how. And then in turn, like, those decisions create new experiences and it's, like, life. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And just like relating back to that salsa um, example, I don't know why that stuck with me. (laughs) But if you take salsa classes, for example, you might want to go travel somewhere and dance salsa. And that experience might lead to something else. Maybe you meet someone who then will point you towards something else, maybe in terms of career or personal life. It's all just a chain of experiences. I love what you said about training data because that is the best way to look at it. We are machines that are processing these experiences and then we kind of turn that into something. Yeah. Something good. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much, Catherine. This was amazing. So much interesting knowledge and just a great perspective on life. Um, I'm sure that everybody watching this learned, has learned something new. And yeah, guys, please go check out Catherine's channel. The link will be up here. <laughs> I think it will be up here. <laughs> or up here. Another dance. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Catherine. This was awesome. This yeah. is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was awesome. I love the way you perceive challenges and overcome those and see community to make you stronger. I hope you guys have learned a lot from that. I know I have. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. That was awesome. If you guys are not following Catherine so far, please make sure you do. Her channel will be up here and also in the description as well as her Instagram make sure you follow her over there as well. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions or ideas, or if there's something that you really related to from this video, please let me know in the comments below, or also my Instagram, which is Coding Blonde. Press that subscribe button and good stuff will come your way. <laughs> have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.